The views and opinions expressed did not necessarily reflect those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. Okay. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Hi, I'm Dr. Rudy Cashman, neurosurgeon, Fort Wayne, Indiana. I'll be speaking this evening uh, about the non-diet, the non-diet, if that isn't interesting. What I'm saying is a way of eating uh, to be of normal weight uh, and not to have heart disease, vast disease, reduced rate of uh, cancer, to look great. It's a way of eating, the type of food that you should eat. And I've explained it in great detail. I have a lot of experience with it. Uh, I am, am personal friends with Dr. Esseltine from the Cleveland Clinic, Dr. Furman, who's nationally known New York Times uh, bestseller list, Dr. Barnhart, Hans Deal at Loma Linda University, uh, Dean Ornish. These are all people that I've met at meetings. I've read their books. So I really know the subject in, in, in detail. You can have confidence in that. So what does really the non-diet in, involve? And I would explain in detail what these terms mean, but let's sort of start. Low glycemic index complex carbs. The glycemic index is where they took foods and tested them every 15 minutes and see how quickly it raised the uh, blood sugar. I'll explain that in more detail later. Whole grain, 100% whole grain, legumes, beans, uh, vegetables, in essence, all you can eat, uh, fruits, in essence, all you can uh, eat. And I don't even stress uh, portion control. Uh, I, uh, if you eat this type of food, it will turn your appetite off. You won't have to be uh, counting uh, calories or what portions you should eat. I eat that way. Uh, I weigh 145 pounds, and I believe me, I didn't always weigh that much. But I, I eat all I want. And I, but it's nutrient density. We'll be speaking about nutrient density, and I'll explain this to you in a little while. Uh, stress reduction. Steroids from stress in our blood cause us to overeat. Uh, you want to see a stressed out individual, uh, someone with a large abdomen, uh, that's a stressed out individual a lot of the time and causes us to overeat. Uh, psychological control is important. What makes a lot of people eat? Why we do, we, do we have huge sections of the population uh, way overweight? They're under terrible stress, economic stress, for example. And it's that dopamine in food that makes them eat. We explain that in more detail. Uh, we, we're going to spe speak a little bit about sugar addiction. Some of us are addicted to sugars, and it's, it's a tough one. Increasing your fiber in your diet, for example, prevents the absorption of a lot of your food, and so a high fiber diet is important. If you eat nutrient dense foods, uh, you're going to have a lot of fiber uh, in your diet, for example. And take a multivitamin. I say take some vitamin D, some omega-3. That, in essence, really is a non-diet. But now let's go off on this little journey. Let's have a little bit of fun. Uh, let me explain to you a little bit about uh, five books I've written about this subject. So, uh, indeed, I do know a lot about it. I call them the magic five. Uh, one is The Secret of the Non-Diet for Adults. It's a book I, uh, I've written for adults, and I've had many of my patients read this book and lose 30, 40 pounds, their diabetes went away, their heart disease started going away, their vascular disease started going away. Then I wrote one for children. Yes, I researched that a great deal because we've got uh, a good third of our children are obese, uh, and uh, many of them more than that than, than uh, overweight, so I wrote a book about that. Then The Secret of Reversing Type 2 Diabetes. You wouldn't believe it. I'm a neurosurgeon, okay? 
one in three or one in four patients I look at every day as a neurosurgeon, yes, as a neuros neurosurgeon, uh, have type 2 diabetes. It's a devastating disease. People lose their legs, they become blind, they amputate, uh, the increased rate of uh, dementia, heart attacks and strokes at a young age. So I wrote this very important book. Uh, and then I wrote a book on psychology of eating. Why do we eat? Why do we eat the wrong food? Why do we eat so much? So I wrote a, a book on that. And how do you motivate yourself to eating? So I wrote uh, a book with 38 different ways to motivate yourself. There could be a million ways, but I picked 38 I thought of the best. So this is uh, to cover the subject. And you, you can purchase these uh, on, uh, on Amazon, for example, or at uh, Lufthansa Hospital or any of the bookstores, the libraries can get them for you. Uh, these, these all uh, are well-known books and, and, uh, and are out there. Let's explain to you, what about, what way of eating do you really recommend? I, I recommend about four different ways. Uh, one, a vegetarian way. A person doesn't eat meat, fish, fowl, or products thereof is a vegetarian. Uh, it's a very good way of eating. Seven-day Adventists is part of their religion, and they live longer than, than we do. Uh, but remember, they also celebrate the Sabbath on Saturday, which is a good thing. So it's more than just what, what you eat. The only trouble is they may eat a lot of cheese. And I have a vegetarian friend, and I checked his cholesterol. Guess what? It was elevated. So now he's eating vegetarian cheese, and his, uh, his uh, blood uh, factors drop. So it's uh, quite important uh, to, to watch cheese a little bit as a vegetarian. But it's a healthy way of eating. Uh, and... Uh, a vegan, vegan, whatever you would like to call it, is a person that does not eat meat, fish, fowl, dairy, or products made thereof. So doesn't eat meat or dairy. Now, if you have advanced heart disease, you've had a, you've had a stroke, you've had angioplasties, you've had cardiac surgery, I would consider being a vegan or vegan uh, because, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's written there, uh, you're going to have trouble. Your lifespan uh, may be limited. So to switch to a vegan way of eating, uh, I think, uh, uh, pretty important. Uh, he doesn't eat anything with a mother or a face. Okay, let's have a little humor. Uh, there's a vegetarian right there. Uh, and people may say, people may say, uh, uh, I need my protein, I need my protein. What I'm going to teach you tonight is that you can get all the protein that you need from vegetables. Yes, a balanced vegetarian diet has all the protein that you need. Many great athletes are vegetarians. Look at this gorilla here. He's a vegetarian. Yes. And, and look at his size. You might say, where does he get his protein? From the vegetables. Our vegetables have in them, a lot of vegetables are 50% protein. Some vegetables have in them more protein than beef. Broccoli has more protein in it than beef. Most people do not realize that. And uh, the only thing that may be missing uh, if you, eat a you get all your uh, uh, protein from, from uh, vegetables, some B12. So you take a B12 supplement. I mean, big deal. And, uh, but that's about the only thing. What's a flexitarian? A third way of eating. Remember I said uh, vegetarian, vegan way of eating? Now a flexitarian. That's me. That's a combination of vegan and vegetarian. I eat about 20% meat. And I made some uh, fish, for example. I don't eat beef. I've lost the taste. That's too fat for me. I'd get diarrhea if I had a hamburger, for example. I've lost uh, the taste buds from, uh, from that. You literally have to teach people to eat fat. A child, a three-year-old child, would never eat uh, meat. It has no taste for it unless you teach them. There are no taste buds uh, for fat on your tongue. It's just salt and, and, and bitter uh, uh, and uh, sugar. That's it. You get to teach a child to eat fatty food. Uh, and... Uh, so a flexitarian way of eating is a very healthy way of eating. If you get to a normal weight, you could be a flexitarian. But I think if you're in trouble uh, with vascular disease, uh, for example, I would uh, definitely uh, try to uh, be a vegan type way of eating. Now, nutritarian, what is that? That's a diet uh, recommended by Dr. Joe Furman, a friend of mine. I played tennis with Dr. Furman. His book, uh, uh, Eat to Live, is New York Times bestseller list right now, like number six or seven excellent book to read. I'd suggest also looking at his, uh, his website. What's a nutritarian? A nutritarian is a person who considers the nutrient density of the food that they're eating. So what, are the, what is nutrient density? Vitamins, minerals, 14 vitamins, 16 uh, minerals, okay? And then we have about 25,000 phytochemicals, plant 
chemicals. They're the enzymes, coenzymes, that run the machinery of our body. Uh, they have in them the great chemicals that prevent cancer. Did you know, if you followed a nutritarian way of eating, uh, that you probably could cut the breast cancer rate 50%. 50%. Prostate rate, probably the same. That's in the literature. Read Dr. Furman's book, Supreme Immunity, just came out. I was one of the reviewers for Harper's on that. And, uh, and 50%, I hardly ever meet a woman who knows that. Yeah, we're not, I don't know an idea why we're not teaching it. Yes, we could cut breast cancer 40 to 50% if we eat a nutrient way of eating. Very important thing uh, for, uh, for people to know. And other types of cancers, colon, prostate cancer, can be cut by eating the right uh, food. So a nutritarian is a person who considers the nutrient density of their food. What is it? It's food of color. It's food of color. In addition, some uh, don't have color, like mushrooms and onions, are very healthy. Uh, it is the enzymes that are in these foods of color, these peppers, uh, these uh, tomatoes, uh, these beets, uh, that are anti-cancer. Anti uh, they uh, prevent uh, type 2 diabetes, uh, for example, uh, and a very important uh, 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 foods and a great way uh, to reverse diabetes, type 2, a great way to uh, reverse vascular disease. Dr. Dean Arnish published many books reversing, stopping, preventing, reversing vascular disease. He proved it with angiograms. If you've had a heart attack or stroke, please eat this way and you can reverse your disease. It is very rare, though, when I see patients today uh, with this, that they've been taught this or that they are doing this. So please read my books or attend my classes. Uh, I can stop, reverse, prevent vascular disease. I can cure type 2 diabetes 80, 90 percent of the time. If you get to normal body mass index, which would have natural, naturally baiting this way. We're going to have some shows down the line on this uh, coming up uh, shortly. Today, I, uh, mainly uh, in speaking for you to get to normal weight uh, uh, and to look good, to, to feel good. Uh, we, for example, I read in the paper the other day in Fort Wayne, Indiana, that we are number three nationally uh, in the rate of vascular disease. Number three. We're leading the country almost in obesity. Something must be done in a, if we want to avoid all these illnesses coming down the line. And that's the reason, frankly, I'm doing this show. And I, and I hope you listen to me. And what I'm really saying is, this is not a diet. It's the non-diet. It's a way of eating. It's not hard. I don't, I, my lunch today was a pile of food. That's because the doctor's lounge, the, the other half against the wall, I know the dietitian, and, I, and uh, we are very good friends, and they've been very cooperative, and Lufen Hospital has changed that, that we have a choice, and we can eat a pile of this great food, and never gain weight, never gain weight doing that, and I feel really full. And the nutrients in this food will uh, turn your appetite off. That's the beauty of it. You eat this way, your appetite will go down. When you eat natural food, nature turns your appetite off. When you eat the mad, sad, toxic American diet, the nasty food, that turns your appetite on. It turns your appetite on. You will eat more, and you'll get heavier, and you'll get heavier. Nutrients turn the appetite off. That's a very important thing uh, uh, for you uh, uh, to know. A nutritarian is a person who eats highly nutrient-dense foods. I mentioned that. A person who eats little meat or cheese but eats highly nutrient-dense foods, vegetables, beans, and fruit. Dr. Furman uh, will allow, he, frankly, he's in essence a flexitarian too because he allows some lean meat a couple of days a week. And if, if your BMI is normal, you have a perfect figure, no, no major disease, to eat meat uh, even th three, four times a week, uh, say some... Uh, lean turkey, some lean chicken, uh, some uh, fish, you're going to probably get away with that. But if you're not of a normal weight and you have the diseases, you once or twice or maybe not at all. Uh, and your taste buds will change. I promise you they will change. What's health? What's health? This is the formula of Dr. Furman. Health in mind. Health equals nutrients. Remember we talked about what are the nutrients. And uh, I've heard Dr. Furman say, uh, chicken, it, 
eating chicken is like having a donut. Wow, how could you say that? How could you say that, Dr. Cashman? Remember what I told you about nutrients? Does chicken have any nutrients? No, there's no color to it. It's got no nutrients. It has some protein in it, has a lot of fat in it too. Chicken is 30 to 40 percent fat. A lot of chicken is as fat as beef. Yes, yes. I recently was at an Amish farm and uh, uh, removing the stitches with someone I'd operate on. I wanted to see what their life was like and it was the most wonderful day, uh, most wonderful people. Uh, but I ate uh, some chicken there and, and, it's, and, it, it, and the chicken had been fed a lot of grain and, uh, and it was quite fatty, instinct. Uh, and uh, and uh, interestingly enough, all the 50 Amish people that I had dinner with, not a person was overweight. Why is that? Why is that? They work very hard. Most of us don't do physical labor like that. They all were in essence of normal weight. So, but health equals nutrients divided by calories. So nutrient density, health equals nutrients divided by calories. This is really uh, uh, what your life is like. And you must consider what you eat. You must consider what you're eating. What did that animal eat? What did that animal eat? Because that's what you're eating. You're eating the animal. Was that a grain-fed animal? You're eating, grain, you're eating grains that have been stripped of their nutrients. And uh, what's the mad American diet? Meat, dairy products. No child should drink milk after age two from an animal. No mammal drinks the milk of another mammal. Why are we drinking milk? It's too fatty. It's just been advertised by the agricultural industry, the milk industry, and, uh, and, and milk has a lot of allergies in it, has bad protein in it, your child is going to get more colds. Dr. Furman in his children's book clearly mentions uh, that if you don't give your uh, child a lot of milk, they have much less colds, much less uh, allergies, and about the mother's milk is the greatest. You should breastfeed your child till age two. That's the best proteins, the best fats, the best omega-3 fats, the essential fatty acids that make your brain grow. Uh, breastfeeding is a, a, a wonderful thing. Uh, and, and don't teach your child to eat fatty food. Teach it to eat vegetarian type food and they'll never develop the taste buds uh, for fat. So the mad diet is meat, dairy products, cheese, 80% fat. Cheese is 80% fat. You can buy though vegetarian cheeses. Uh, if you go to the natural food store here in uh, Sherman and Spring, great place to go to learn about proper food. Uh, uh, there, uh, you, you can get some vegetarian cheeses, and you can get them at the big stores too. They uh, they are changing, but you just got to look a little bit harder. Uh, and uh, trans fats, that's uh, vegetable oils that we added a hydrogen atom, and now the, and now there's salad. That's trans fats. That's a French fry. A French fry is a fat tray. It's a fat tray, and. Uh, uh, refined foods, stress causes us uh, to overeat. Remember the steroids in the blood uh, cause us to eat because we feel a tiger is running at us from stress, but there's no tiger. It's, it's the email, it's the text, it's the tax man, it's, it, it's, it's the budget, it's the job, and, and we're not running. So steroids go high in the blood. We eat like anything, like the tiger is going to devour us, but he's not there. So we store the fat, we don't exercise, uh, and alcohol is part of the mad diet. Have a glass of wine. I'm not opposed to that if you're, if you're used to that. Uh, but beyond that, alcohol is, is, is clearly not a health food. And I'll tell you, uh, every drink of alcohol causes some brain cells to die. Every drink. I saw a patient today. I looked at the MRI of the brain. I didn't want to mention it to the patient because they didn't complain of memory loss. But I looked at that MRI and it was a person who drank three or four drinks a day. It shrunk. It's going to show up. Next few years, memory loss will will uh, come big time. This is a very interesting slide here. I'd like you to look at it. Uh, and this, remember I said one out of three or four people I see have type 2 diabetes. And in type 2 diabetes, the body uh, does not, uh, makes too much insulin, okay? Type 1, uh, usually children get it as an autoimmune disease or something and, and the pancreas dies and we don't make insulin. So we give shots for that, okay? And, uh, but type 2 uh, is where, because the fat in our blood is making the receptors on these cells. This is one cell. We have 70 trillion cells. And you see those little pink receptors sticking out uh, and surrounded with something yellow, and that's fat. Fat comes in the blood. It makes those receptor sites sticky. So insulin, uh, whose job it is to bring sugar into the cell, 
cannot do it because it cannot open the door to the cell. It can't get past the receptors because the receptors and the doors into the cell are full of fat. There's fat in the cell, fat outside the cell. So what does the pancreas do? See, it creates insulin like anything, like the heyday. So outside in our blood, we have high insulin levels. But the trouble is, high insulin levels causes vascular disease, uh, inflammation, uh, autoimmune disease, Alzheimer's disease. They're even talking now about Alzheimer's, uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease as being type 3 diabetes. Wow. Wow. We get at least about 40 million type 2 diabetics in this nation now, uh, and, and it's going to double in about a 10-year period uh, because we're not watching what we're eating. And, uh, and, and I used to see it in, in the office. I was just on the cardiac floor at the hospital, and all three people weighed over 200 pounds. What do you think they got? They all get uh, type 2 diabetes. So this uh, insulin is destructive to the human body, but for a while, because the insulin level is increasing, we are getting sugar in the cell, and our energy level seems to be okay. Because remember, energy is oxygen, uh, and sugar make ATP, our energy molecule, okay? Every, every cell does that. Uh, so uh, we, we need that for energy. But uh, the blood sugar may be normal. The insulin level is high. Remember, insulin is destructive to the human body. So we get a blood test. Your doctor showed R as serum insulin because you, your fasting blood sugar may be normal. You don't have diabetes. Your blood sugar is fine, but you may be pre-diabetic. I call that the golden opportunity, the time to kill this disease by losing weight and uh, to get the fat out of your blood. Now, I've never met a patient who could tell me what insulin resistance is. I've never met a type 2 diabetic who could tell me that the disease is potentially curable. I failed to understand this. So that's the reason I sort of educating, maybe screaming about it, because that's critical to know that your disease is potentially curable, preventable, reducible. And uh, food's a drug. And this is indeed is a problem. Uh, uh, food, frankly, is the cocaine of the century. Yes. We are using food to get dopamine to make us feel good. I know I do it. I do it. I had a stressful day the other day, and I generally, as you could tell, I probably eat pretty darn good. Uh, some pretty ground rules. I don't get food. number one, ground rule number one, no junk food at home. But it's Christmas now, it's getting tougher. We're having some parties at home, some junk food is left. But rule number one should be no junk food in the home, then you won't be tempted. You, you don't see it. Uh, but I had a, quite a stressful day yesterday, operations and things that I was looking at, and patients' problem, brain tumors, some not so friendly, people driving through town, and it stresses me too, as well as certainly the patient I was using food as a drug. I couldn't believe it. I went to a fast food restaurant, get me a chicken sandwich with a bunch of nasty stuff on it. I never do that. I haven't done that in two years. Stress. I, I, I reduce my stress by bringing dopamine aboard. But that's a better way, some music, some breathing techniques, maybe a good walk. Uh, maybe some, some better food, but it happens. It, it's dopamine is, is driving this society of overeating. We lead very stressful lives, from texting to the internet to the job threats, a lot of people unemployed, and uh, using food to feel good. Cocaine's too expensive. And, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and then we give people food stamps to buy this nasty stuff when we should be requiring them to buy healthy food, at least where the taxpayer's gonna pay for it. They ought to at least buy some healthy food. And that is the reason in the economically deprived and the stressed people uh, they have a very high rate of obesity, very high rate of type 2 diabetes. And besides, it's a little bit in their genes, too, they, they, in the genetic st structure that expresses it. We're not overweight because of our genetic structure. We're overweight because we eat the wrong thing. That wasn't a heavy set person in the concentration camp. No way. If the food is not provided, uh, we're, we're, or we eat vegetarian, we're, we're thin. Uh, but... Uh, stress uh, uh, causes us to, to, eat, to eat nasty food. It's a real problem. And uh, dopamine is the main drug, but as we uh, digest our food and time goes by, then serotonin is secreted, and, and then endorphins, uh, and uh, you, you know we uh, uh, feel better. Uh, let's talk about nutrients, macronutrients. What are the macronutrients? They're the proteins, the fat and the fiber, uh, uh, and carbohydrates. Carbohydrates uh, are sugars, Complex and simple. A simple uh, carbohydrate is plain old sugar. Complex is, is large chains of sugars. Okay, and we're interested in the complex carbs because 
what they come in, like a bean, for example, is a complex carb, but it has a, a bran, it has a covering to it. Uh, and the covering prevents us from absorbing all that carbohydrate in there. So if you eat a complex carb, like a bean, you won't absorb the whole thing. You'll absorb maybe 60%. The fiber, the long chain sugars, would prevent the absorption of all the carbohydrate, and, and you may absorb 60%. So if you're eating a lot of uh, uh, cruciferous vegetables, and I'll show you what those are in a minute, complex carbs, you're not going to absorb the whole thing. Uh, and uh, then we protein. We need a certain amount of protein and, and about eight essential amino acids that our body doesn't make. We have to eat them. But remember what I said? You can, if you eat a balanced vegetarian diet, you don't need to eat meat. The American Diet Take Association, the Canadian Diet Association, they all said that. A balanced vegetarian diet, you don't... Uh, I recently even uh, was talking to a doctor's wife at, uh, at the uh, uh, hospital. She says, I gotta have my protein, I gotta have my protein, so she wouldn't give up meat. And she's quite overweight, and, uh, and she's wrong. She just is, does not know that you can get all the protein you need uh, from plants. A and we need a certain amount of fat. We don't want a zero fat diet. I suggest around 20%, but how, how do we know it's 20%? You know, that, that's kind of uh, difficult. We, we need some essential fats, some of the uh, uh, cosinoids, the intel chips of our body that jump from cell to cell, the original communicating system of, our, of living things before we had a blood system. Uh, we, ne we need those for, for anti-inflammatory factors, uh, and, uh, and, and they're very important. And with that, you need to eat some essential fatty acids. They're, they're omega-3s. They omega 3s they could be fish, uh, flaxseed, for, for, for example. Uh, you can take... Uh, uh, capsules for, for that fish oil uh, capsules. I take I take a uh, thousand milligrams uh, every day. Then I have a, uh, maybe a quarter of a cup of fla flaxseed put on my uh, cereal. Uh, so I get plenty of the essential fatty acid. Uh, you definitely need some of that. Uh, but uh, to have a lot of fat in our body is, is is very poor because fat is like a gland. Yeah, it's a gland. You got a big pot belly. You got a gland sitting there. Most of the fat is inside the abdominal cavity, not under the skin. It's actually around your organs, and it secretes 20 nasty inflammatory chemicals that cause insulin resistance. So you get type 2 diabetes, inflames the arteries, show to develop vascular disease, strokes, and heart attacks uh, at a, uh, a young age, autoimmune diseases, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, for example. And remember, I said increased rate of cancer. You want to cut your cancer rate in half for a lot of cancers, breast cancer, prostate cancer, colon cancer, eat a high-dense nutrient type of way of eating. And then we spoke about uh, 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 fiber. Uh, and uh, uh, remember, that's complex sugars that prevent the absorption of uh, a lot of cholesterol right out of the gut. So fiber is, is your friend. Fiber is your friend. And we spoke already about uh, omega-3. The micronutrients, when we talked about the micronutrient diet, way of eating, Vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, 25, 20,000 of them. And, in the, and on this picture you see, they're foods of color. Uh, you see them there. Uh, these wonderful foods uh, that we have here are so full of enzymes and coenzymes. Uh, they uh, are very healthy. Remember we spoke about that, cosinoids, the 18 carbon atoms, the essential fatty acids. Uh, they maintain the information highway of the biological internet. Before there were living things that had a blood system, the cosinoids is what uh, was the communicating system of the body. We still have that today. We still have that today. Uh, they're oh, 500 million years old. They're the super hormones, no gland. They're rapidly made, rapidly destroyed. Uh, the precursor to them is omega-3, omega-6. You hear those terms. Uh, those uh, are the essential fatty acids. Remember the supplements that we take. If you eat a lot of beans, uh, some oils, uh, have ha, have uh, a lot of omega-3 uh, in them. That, and you, they are converted to 20 carbon essential fatty acids. They're good and bad. Uh, your, your 60, 70 uh, trillion uh, cells uh, make them. Let's talk a little bit about nutrient density. Maybe we talked about nutrients, but some are more dense than others. For example, if you go to Whole Foods uh, supermarket uh, in, say, Indianapolis or Chicago, unfortunately, Fort Wayne doesn't have one, uh, uh, they have the foods labeled with a number. They use Dr. Furman's number, yes. And, and, and John Mackey, who is the president of the company, is a friend of mine. He's, he's, I've 
I had dinner with him recently. Uh, and uh, he labels the food. Isn't it something? I've tried to get companies to do it here. I haven't really convinced yet, but maybe I'm not going to give up on that. And uh, it's a nutrient density. But what are the most nutrient-dense foods around? Uh, turnip greens, mustard greens, collard greens, 100. Uh, we rate them as 100 nutrient density. Kale, 100. There's so many great uh, enzymes uh, and chemicals in them that prevent cancer, that cause healing, uh, that avoid illness. Watercress, 100. Brussels sprouts, 90. Bok choy, 85. Spinach, 82. Arugula, 77. Cabbage, 59. Broccoli, 32. Cauliflower, th uh, 51. Uh, and uh, pistachio nuts are 9 or 10. Mushrooms, 35. Strawberries, 35. So I give you some idea that there are different uh, ones. Pomegranates, uh, 30. Carrots, 30, 37, blackberries, 29. So these are, you can rate the foods you're eating by nutrient uh, density, the amount of chem great chemicals that are, that are in them. And, uh, and, and Dr. Furman and myself, we talk a great deal about a resistant starch and fiber. So starch that has a lot of fiber in it, like black beans, have 42.6% fiber. Northern beans, 41, for example. Red kidney beans, 36. So these are high-fiber foods. Beans are your friend. If you're a bean eater, you're going to be healthy. You know, make great soups out of them. And uh, they have great nutrient uh, uh, density. Uh, split peas, 31% uh, 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 percent, uh, fiber. Now, let's look at a white potato. Uh, that's 2% fiber. Yes. A sweet potato, 3% fiber. Uh, Sweet potatoes are more healthy, actually, than white potato. Their glycemic index is a bit lower. And we'll be speaking about glycemic index uh, shortly. Uh, and, uh, and when we talk about, uh, you know, the uh, uh, complex carbohydrates in wheats and grains, I want you to eat 100% whole grain, 100% whole wheat. Any other terms uh, will not do because they've stripped the nutrients off them, they process the foods. Uh, once you take the coverings off the food, the, that's called the bran, that's called the bran, uh, uh, then uh, you're dealing with pure sugar most of the time. So you want to eat whole grain, and we'll be speaking more about uh, grains. But phytochemicals, they induce detoxification uh, enzymes. They control the production of free radicals. Free radicals are produced uh, by metabolism of food, uh, where an electron is stolen uh, uh, by, uh, through the oxidative process, uh, and, and then you have a free radical. Free radicals destroy our body. That's the free radical theory of aging. Uh, and uh, free rad you want to eliminate free radicals, and you can reduce them by eating proper food. Phytochemicals are full of, uh, of uh, chemicals that remove the free radicals from the blood system and, and heal you. So it de they deactivate and detoxify cancer-causing agents, the free radicals. Uh, they protect cell structures from damage by toxins. They're, they're the fueling mechanism to repair damaged DNA. So phytochemicals fight cancer. That's how they fight cancer. So, and, they, and they avoid DNA damage. Uh, and they induce beneficial antifungal, antibacterial, antiviral effects. Eating in high-dense nutrient foods reduces infection rate in you and your children. Furman wrote a book on that. And it's in my book. It's, it's, in, it's in my books. And uh, so it improves uh, your immunity. Phytochemicals improve your immunity, avoiding infections and avoiding cancer, avoiding vascular disease, avoiding uh, diabetes. It heals you. So it's an excellent way of, uh, of eating. Uh, here's the nutrient food pyramid of uh, Dr. Furman's. And you notice in the pyramid, what's at the bottom? Vegetables, half raw, half cooked. So vegetables are the main dish, okay? Fruits is next up, and then beans, okay? And, and then uh, seeds and nuts are, are, are very good. Dr. Furman and myself eat one ounce. We eat one ounce of nuts a day. Uh, why do we do that? For the omega-3, uh, be because of resistant starch uh, and because of polyunsaturated, monosaturated fats. Uh, beans are healthy and have a lot of fiber in them. So uh, 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 beans and nuts, uh, uh, and, and his favorite nut, uh, uh, I think, is an, is an almond. And, uh, and, uh, and almonds don't have as much carbohydrate in them as other nuts, so and they're good appetite suppressant. 
I eat an ounce of nuts every day. At the Lutheran Lounge, we have nuts provided every day uh, for our food there. I think it's, it's just great. Uh, and then uh, whole grain is uh, up the pyramid. But uh, uh, grains, uh, you know, only 10,000 years old. They're only 10,000 years old. So they haven't been through the evolutionary process. Uh, and you should eat 100% whole grain, uh, but uh, whole grains, I mean, all grains that you eat have been stripped of their fiber a little bit. I mean, uh, the, you may uh, think you're eating uh, pumpernickel and it's still got all the, the fiber around it. All grains have had some fiber stripped. So uh, grains, in, you know, cereals, uh, 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 breads, pastas, what are they? They're trays for fat. So you've got to watch it. You can only eat a certain amount of that. I mean, whole grains are fine. It's certainly a lot better than meat. It has no cholesterol in it. Uh, without whole grains, without uh, uh, rice, uh, meat, and uh, beans, the whole world would be starving. The reason we were able to, to explode into cities was strictly because of grains. 10,000 years ago, that's when we could leave the, leave the farm, and, and we are uh, now living in cities. Uh, without uh, uh, rice, corn, beans, uh, the, the world would be starving. No doubt about it. But you can certainly overdo it with rice eating. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and potato eating, uh, for, for example. I um, mean, potatoes don't have phytochemicals in them, have a lot of, a lot of uh, carbs in them, and, and uh, if, if you're short of energy, certainly a baked potato is fine, but it, 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 it's also, uh, it, it has no phytochemicals. Uh, so uh, to eat a lot of potatoes, not, really not a good idea, uh, even uh, without the trans fats on them. Animal protein versus plant protein, we spoke about that. Uh, plant, uh, you can get all the protein you need from plant protein. You, all you need to take is B12 supplement. You probably don't need that because you'll be eating enough mosquitoes <laughs> in the vegetables. Uh, you don't need B12. But it, it, just to be sure, that's fine. Take a multivitamin. So, uh, uh, and remember, uh, the, the uh, biggest animals uh, in, in the world, what are they? They're vegetarians. And they have a lot of energy. Who can run the fastest and the longest? The, the meat eaters, the cheetah, the, the lion? No, no. The, the meat eaters, they, they have very short energy thing. They can run short distances. The longest runners, the ones that can run 20 miles, are vegetarians. They're vegetarians. Vegetarians have about 16 feet of, of uh, digestive system, of uh, uh, intestine. Meat eaters, about four feet, three or four feet, yeah, three or four feet. And, and they make, make huge amounts of sulfuric acid in the stomach to break all that food apart. Uh, and and, and they are, uh, they're not the energetic ones. The plant eaters are the great athletes of the world. They're human, incidentally. Uh, the human is the second, is it, it, close to the bottom of, uh, in terms of speed of running. Yeah, the sloth is the slowest. The human is next. All other animals in the world run faster than us. So to think in the beginning of the world uh, that, uh, it, it, that, that uh, the humans lived on, on animals and not plants because of a ridiculous argument. We couldn't catch the animal. And if we caught the animal, a faster animal would eat us. It was plants were the original uh, uh, things on this earth that, that we ate. And, uh, and plants, yeah, believe it or not, are 30 to 50 percent protein. If you eat 100 calories of broccoli, it's twice the protein, 100 calories, the, uh, 100, uh, 100 calories of beef. You just got to eat a lot of broccoli, okay? Uh, people don't understand that. That's a mis misstatement. Oils are processed food, okay? You really shouldn't be use oils of any kind. Uh, they're 120 calories per tablespoon uh, uh, full, uh, and you can get, uh, if you, you want to get, get fat quickly, use a lot of oils. Uh, and interestingly enough, this is something I didn't know until recently, is that oils are so rapidly absorbed in the GI system. You know how long it takes to get oil into the bloodstream if you use oil in a salad, for example? <laughs> you won't believe it. Three minutes. Three minutes. Yes. Normally fat metabolism takes about four hours, but oils, three minutes are in your blood system. So you could, so especially you got a heart disease and, and, and you had a heart attack and you're in the hospital and you let you order your meal and you start pouring oil over, over your salad. And it's one of the dumbest things that you could probably dream up. If they were to spin down your blood, uh, a half hour later, it would look like olive oil. It's been done. It's been proven. And uh, cruciferous vegetables, that's interesting. They're anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, you know, like, like uh, broccoli, cauliflower. 
uh, antioxidant. They get rid of the free radicals, uh, inhibit angiogenesis, the growth of blood vessels, which form cancer. So there are certain foods that cause growth and chemicals cause growth of blood vessels to spread cancers around. So cruciferous vegetables are anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, uh, anti-angiogenesis. Cruciferous vegetables are twice as effective in anti-cancer activity as other vegetables. Very interesting, great, of course, for, for uh, diet control. And here's examples you can see on the right. Uh, what are good examples? Arugula, bok choy, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, collards, horseradish, kale, mustard greens, radishes, uh, cabbage, turnips, watercress, all great cruciferous vegetables. And the reason they call them cruciferous is that, that as a flower in early in their growth, it's like a cross. That's where the term comes from. So they are cancer fighting and cause great weight loss. And they remove carcinogens from the, from the blood, they kill cancer cells. So these are, uh, if you're eating a lot of vegetables, all of these great chemicals from these vegetables and, and in mushrooms and onions and use them in their soups, great cancer fighters. They fight the cancer and they prevent the cancer. Something very important and not stressed enough. Let's talk about grains a little bit. Remember I said 100% whole grain? You know, complex carbohydrates, whole grain. Very interesting. And uh, always make sure it's 100% whole grain. But look for the first product on the label. It needs to say 100%. And Dr. Furman says grains should not be a substantial part of a diet because they don't have nutrients. Remember I mentioned this earlier? It's sort of high up uh, in the uh, uh, pyramid. They've only been around for 10,000 years. They haven't been around for that long. Uh, and uh, so to overdo it like six pieces of bread, not a good idea. A couple of pieces is okay. After all, they don't have cholesterol in them at least. So uh, grains are nutrient compromised. There's no, no uh, nutrients in, in grain. Uh, our bodies have not adapted to them because we have only been farming for 10,000 years. That's why there hasn't been enough time in evolutionary time to change our bodies. But uh, as I mentioned, if it wasn't for some of the basic grains, you know, rice and wheat and uh, corn, most of the world would be starving, no doubt about that. And, uh, and, but don't fool yourself, all grains are partially refined. They've been stripped of their bran. Uh, and then there's the gluten issue, you know, uh, wheat and, uh, and, uh, and rye, uh, for example, uh, and all the, the gluten issue has been huge. We're thinking one in 33 people have an issue with gluten. That, that the science of that has not been totally clarified yet, uh, but certainly if you have celiac disease, you can't be uh, eating this stuff. Uh, is it one of 33? I'm disinclined to think so, but, you, but if you have some obscure physical symptoms and no, nobody can figure it out, uh, and let's say it's not fibromyalgia or something, I mean, you ought to think about maybe the grains it's doing to you. And, uh, so, uh, and you have to remember, uh, when we talk about this, you. What do we feed cows to fatten them up a lot of the time? We don't use grass anymore. We put them in a cage uh, and we feed them grains. And then we eat the darn stuff. Remember what I said? You gotta consider what you're eating. What did that come from? What was that animal eating? Uh, and, uh, and if you have trouble stopping eating meat, just think of it. I mean, what they do, they put them in a cage, little pigs too, chickens too. And what they do to the chickens, you don't even wanna know. And, uh, and uh, take their beaks off them, a lot of them. I mean, it's totally ridiculous. And then we eat them. Just think about that, the cruelty involved, even trouble stopping. And uh, I read that in the mystery book of, uh, of uh, Dr. Cook, who uh, well, I play uh, tennis with, wrote these uh, great books, Coma, for example. And he was talking about going in a meat factory, this mystery of his. And ever since I read that, I've been unable to, to, to eat beef. I, I cannot possibly eat something that has such cruelty applied to it. And uh, so what do we give them? Uh, and uh, so what do you feed cows to fatten them? Grains, bread, cereals, pasta. They are delivery vehicles for calories. Yes, these grains, bread, cereals, and pasta are delivery vehicles uh, uh, for fatty stuff. So you gotta watch it. But uh, certainly you need a certain amount of whole grain, 100% whole grain uh, is reasonably healthy, but you gotta watch the amount uh, you know that you eat. And uh, grains, uh, cereals, pastas, breads, it carries of calories. And uh, let's give some examples of grains. Whole oats, whole wheat, whole, whole rye, buckwheat, kasha, whole corn, wild rice, brown rice, couscous, granola, quinoa, millet, belt, whole grain breads, pasta from grain, or, uh, for, for example. 
metabolic syndrome. We need to talk about glycemic index too a little bit here, but let's talk about metabolic syndrome. About 70 million people in this country have, have a, a metabolic uh, uh, syndrome. Uh, you would not uh, 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 believe that, but uh, half of those people become type 2 diabetics. What is metabolic syndrome? It's called Raven syndrome. It's called syndrome X, uh, uh, also another term. And, and what, what does it mean? Blood pressure equal to higher than 130 over 85. You have any, about three of these. Insulin resistance. Let me explain to you what that is. Large waist circumference. Uh, indicates metabolic syndrome. If I see a patient that looks like they're around uh, 40 or so, uh, uh, that's odds of them having metabolic syndrome is high. Uh, men 40 inches or more, women 35 inches or more, based on the body mass index, and uh, uh, is is part of that. Low low uh, HDL cholesterol. The uh, HDL cholesterol is the good uh, cholesterol, the heavenly <laughs> uh, cholesterol. Uh, LDL, uh, uh, less, uh, higher than, than, than 100 would, would be also. And, uh, and uh, triglycerides greater than 150, the fats in, in your blood. If you have about two or three of those, you have metabolic syndrome. That anticipates the future. That's the time to act. A lot of people walk around with metabolic syndrome and nobody knows they got it. A lot of children uh, have it. But if you see a pot belly, they probably got it. They have high blood pressure, they probably got it. They're type 2 diabetic, they got it. And, uh, and that anticipates the future and gives you time uh, to act. Uh, let's talk about the glycemic index a little bit. And a uh, glycemic index is where they took foods uh, and, and you ate them, uh, 75 grams of a food, and then they check your blood in about 15 minutes and they keep on checking it. And, and the rate of rise determines the GI index, it's zero to 100. You can look on a website, glycemicindex.com, comes out of Australia, and it will list the foods in the glycemic index. For example, remember zero to 100, uh, a glycemic index, say, of white bread uh, would be 100, okay? It's a simple sugar. It's, it's, it's sugar, white rice, probably close to 100. Uh, and, uh, but beans, 20. Fruit, 35. And you want to eat 50 or under on the glycemic index. Some would even say 30 or under. Another person might say 55 or under. But that doesn't mean every single food. That means the majority of the time, the majority of food you eat, if you, you don't want to gain weight and get rid of some of these diseases and reverse disease, you should be in the glycemic index 50 or under. And there are fools out there. You know, uh, people say eat, eat uh, a brown rice instead of white rice. Let me give you a clue here. Uh, uh, white rice may be 80, uh, but brown rice is 70. It's still high. You can't be eating a lot of rice uh, uh, either. Uh, or uh, you very well uh, could gain a lot of weight. You get it's, you got to uh, limit it, uh, and so the glycemic index is, is measures the rate of rise of the blood sugar. They also use glycemic load is another way that the amount of calorie in there. That number is usually one to ten. You want to eat ten or under, and we'll talk more about that. Uh, uh, what's atherosclerosis? That's a buildup of cholesterol-filled patches that clog your arteries, okay, that's very common and seen with inflammatory disease, type 2 diabetes, is seen a great deal, hypertension leads to it because the, because the high blood pressure will, will uh, hit the bifurcations that you, where, the, uh, br where the blood vessels branch and cause little injuries there and cholesterol, if you have high cholesterol, will hit those injured areas to try to repair it and that's build of a plaque occurs. So obviously you want to avoid that. Uh, and. Uh, and uh, low glycemic foods avoid heart disease, colorectal cancer, and, uh, and uh, so it's quite important to pay. Now, we mentioned already about uh, glycemic load. That's 10 or under is the number. And uh, high fiber fruits and vegetables, uh, 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 low glycemic load. Brand cereals, uh, generally low glycemic. Oatmeal, for example. Uh, oatmeal uh, is especially uh, good to eat uh, because it, the brand, the covering, remember we talked about the covering, uh, is still on. On, on the oat uh, and the germ, that's uh, where, where uh, they fertilize, you know, the, uh, uh, the kernel. Uh, and it, it's still on there, and, and that the reason uh, it, it's very low glycemic uh, index. Uh, many beans, uh, including chickpeas, kidney beans, black beans, lentil, pinto beans, uh, all have low, uh, all low glycemic index foods. Medium glycemic index load, medium. Uh, would be barley, brown rice. Remember I said rice? It's, it's a little higher on glycemic index than you think. Um, 
bulgar is about medium glycemic load. Rice cakes about medium, 11 to 19. And uh, whole grain pasta uh, is about 11 to 19. So that's a little bit high, like quite a few, uh, quite a bit of sugar in there. High glycemic load, 20 and, and over, baked potato. Uh, but but it's, a, it's a complex carbohydrate, but uh, it, it, baked potato is not exactly health food. Contrary to uh, my, my thinking myself, I will go to a restaurant picket sometimes with a baked potato or not, and I have it with a salad and never seem to gain weight. But remember, there's, there's no phytochemicals in a baked potato. What I put on it, one tablespoon full of olive oil, that's it, or salsa, uh, uh, or maybe mustard. I don't put it in the butter and the olive oil and all, uh, and, and uh, I put a mustard and cream and those kind of things I don't use. French fries, of course, are high glycemic load. You don't want them. They're, f they're, they're trays for fat. Uh, uh, and uh, jelly beans, glycemic loads of 30. Candy bars, uh, extremely high. Uh, so uh, to pay attention to glycemic load is important. Uh, in my book that, called The Secret of Undiet for Adults, I have one for children, I have certain hints for you on, on, on how to eat. I'd like to view those uh, quick a little bit. And, uh, and for you to remember, secret number one, all carbohydrates are not alike. You've got to know in the glycemic index uh, whether it's a low, or, low or high. That's important. Starchy, complex carbohydrates quell hunger and turn up our internal furnace, uh, burning calories as heat and energy. Okay. Secret number two, the same starchy carbohydrates that prevent disease and pre prevent premature death can stop and even reverse disease. Dr. Dean Ornish wrote a book, Stopping, Preventing, Reversing uh, Heart Disease. He proved it. Dr. Esseltein did the same thing. I know these people, uh, and, and, and that's not stressed enough. People have a heart attack. They get an angioplasty and get operated on. People forget to mention, hey, man, you, you could reverse this disease by, by eating a high-dense nutrient uh, diet. Uh, just handing out a pill uh, it may stop your angina or do an angioplasty. It may stop your angina, but you still got the disease. You eat this way, you may get rid of it. And uh, uh, secret uh, number four, refined carbohydrates reduce the good HDL. Remember, refined carbohydrates are carbohydrates stripped of the fiber. They're stripped of white bread as a refined carbohydrate. Uh, uh, some cereals, a lot of cereals are, are, uh, have, have been stripped uh, of the fiber and uh, uh, high in the glycemic uh, index. And uh, so foods that promote weight loss are high in complex uh, carbohydrates. Uh, so consumption of complex carbs helps the brain produce higher levels of serotonin, feel good, turn appetite off. And uh, uh, reducing saturated fat without reducing refined carbohydrates uh, works against the goal to lose weight and prevent chronic disease. Saturated fats, fats with a lot of hydrogen items, increase artery clogging LDL cholesterol, the lousy cholesterol. Uh, and uh, the unsaturated fats in, in oil, fish, walnuts, flax seeds, and plant-based oils reduce the LDL, increase uh, the uh, HDL. And uh, animal protein raises cholesterol, uh, while plant protein lowers it. Uh, so to get the minimum of protein you need each day, Balance your vegetables with beans. Eat a balanced vegetarian uh, type diet. And let's move on a little bit. I think I want you to see this slide. Uh, what do I recommend? Let's go through this again. Low glycemic index complex carbs. Remember, 50 or under, you learned what the glycemic index is. Uh, whole grain, 100% whole grain. Remember, don't overdo it in grains. But if you do eat grains, bread, for example, a couple of slices, not six or 10 slices. And, uh, Remember, in evolutionary time, whole grains are new. They're only 10,000 uh, 10, year, years old. So if you're eating uh, living things, for example, that are grain-fed, you just remember that, that you're eating whole grains. Eat legumes and fruits, all you can eat. Omega-3 is important. If you eat omega-3 regularly, the, the fish oil, uh, uh, you uh, will increase your basic metabolic rate about 200 calories. Uh, Multivitamin, I would take, uh, and I'd recommend uh, some vitamin uh, D, uh, about 2,000 milligrams, actually. Uh, I think it's important, maybe a multivitamin. And on the right lower side, you see here uh, an example of a kernel uh, that shows the bran, uh, uh, the endosperm, uh, and the germ, uh, as, and that is what each kernel needs to have. When you strip the bran off, then that's called processed food. 
That's called processed food. That's what I want you to understand. And the germ is where the reproduction occurs. Uh, and in there, some vitamins, some minerals, some complex carbohydrates uh, are, uh, are in there. Uh, appetite suppressants, uh, I'll say it, you know, satiety, uh, full stomach, a few nuts can do it. Uh, reduce uh, uh, sodium, uh, uh, salt increases uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, appetite. Uh, and, let's, uh, and, and let's talk a minute about the psychology of eating. Uh, uh, the, remember the basic chemicals, uh, dopamine, serotonin, endorphins. Uh, a diet means a way of life. This is a way of life. If you want normal weight, eat this way, and, and, and you'll, have, you'll probably live to be 100, uh, undoubtedly. Uh, and don't relieve stress with food. Uh, and let's talk maybe a little bit uh, about uh, things that increase the hunger, the odor of food, empty stomach, eating saturated fats, trans fats, starvation diet, stress, they all increase our hunger. Uh, and exercise, uh, I'd like to spend a minute, is, very, uh, is extremely uh, important because it improves the way we metabolize uh, uh, sugar. Exercise will bring sugar into the muscles, you know, make uh, glycogen, uh, and, uh, and also we secrete endorphins, we feel better. Uh, it's a very good way uh, to uh, us uh, to feel a great deal better helps our, our stress level. For example, increasing your muscle mass is important. I would lift some light weights every other day because the muscle mass uh, will burn a certain amount of calories per day, about 50 calories a day that you don't, don't even have to exercise them. Those muscles, if you build them up, will burn a significant number of uh, calories, improved, uh, improve uh, the, uh, uh, your longevity. Uh, we measure our uh, metabolic uh, equivalents uh, through a, a, a treadmill test, okay? If you're over 10, uh, that's very good uh, uh, energy uh, uh, level to live a long life. So uh, they check that on the treadmill, and, and if you get to about level three, you're running about uh, 3.4 uh, 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 kilo uh, a, uh, per hour, uh, and you're at about a 14% grade, in your MET, your metabolic equivalent, uh, this is called the Bruce scale, uh, and if your met level is about 10, you're going to have a long life, and you've got to work towards that. You know, if it's three or six, uh, you're sitting around as a met level of one, okay? Walking briskly, playing tennis is probably a met level uh, about uh, 10. So it's very important uh, to uh, exercise uh, to make yourself feel good, it reduces your appetite, uh, and uh, to live uh, a, a long life. So uh, let, let's summarize uh, what we spoke about here a little bit today. Uh, what I recommend is the non diet, uh, it's you don't have to count calories, you don't need necessarily practice uh, portion control, uh, it's low glycemic index, complex carbs, 100% whole grain, uh, vegetables, legumes, fruit, essentially all you can eat. You're going to live to be 100. You're going to feel good most of the time, and you're going to have a sound mind too. Remember, the mind is extremely important. What good does it live to be 95? You can't think straight. And, uh, and fat in the blood uh, causes the brain cells to become uh, sticky, uh, and, and, uh, and this healthier way of eating, which I have described here, will prevent heart disease, vascular disease, diabetes, uh, cut the uh, cancer rate uh, at least uh, in half. Uh, I hope you have a chance to look at these five books I've written uh, and look at our website uh, and educate yourself. We must participate in our health care. Uh, it is written that 70% of the people don't wish to participate in their health care. A major mistake. I see a lot of that around. I would say from people I meet, uh, my patients, I spend significant amounts of time with them. I'd at least had three patients a day I spend a good half hour with trying to convince them to change uh, their health habits. Uh, that they do participate at a higher rate. We have a tremendous, tremendous amount of obesity, vascular disease, uh, and diabetes, and cancer in this country. Uh, it, uh, higher almost in the, the highest almost in the world, uh, and something needs to change. I'm trying to lead to that change. I hope you listen to our other uh, programs I have coming up reversing uh, type 2 diabetes, vascular disease, psychology of eating. These are all lectures that are coming up, and I hope you listen to all of those. If you, if you do that, I think you'll be very healthy, happy, 
I, I love you all and uh, namaste. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak to you. Thank you.